I just yelled at them a lot. Like, The rest of 1.5 is talking about inverses, which is something you did talk about last year. But uh, an inverse, right, this is how we could say, like, very vaguely, like not algebraically saying, but if you have the ordered pair A, B, if you switch the ordered pair, then you are uh, talking about the inverse, right? So that's kind of the big thing about inverses, the X and the Y switch places. And maybe I even wrote that. The domain and range are switched. That's a very fancy way of saying it. So the domain becomes the range, and the range becomes the domain. And so what we're going to kind of focus on today is how do we write inverses, graphing inverses, and how do we tell if something has an inverse? Oh man, we're doing lots today. Um, algebraically proving there's inverses. Oh man, that's exciting. Chapter 7, this is what you did in number 2. I bet you all remember that like it was yesterday. I feel like kids lose a whole lot of what they learn, don't you think? The Browns calendar, you still get a long time off in the summer, though. So we have the vertical line test to tell if something is a function. We have the horizontal line test to tell if a function has an inverse. So I'll let you write this down, and then we'll do all computations. Horizontal line test. Do we need to write all that? I don't know. It's a horizontal line test. So where's that? So if it's here, the same variable. Yeah. That's the variable. Yeah. Seven. That's the Mr. Dorset, but he used to teach in this room when I was here, and when we would stand in the hallway to do hall duty, unlike all of us that just stand there and do nothing, if somebody was kissing in the hallway or, like, doing a little too much PDA, he would just yell down the hallway, Ew, gross! That's disgusting! And just, like, as, as loud as he could, just to, like, and then they would stop, and it was so funny. But I, I, I always think about doing it, but I just can't. Like, I'm just not as cool as Mr. Dorset was, but he would just yell. Right? All of these pass the vertical line test. This is a lot of little polynomial function. This would be the cubic function. This is the quadratic function, right? It's not good. Um, all of those pass the vertical line test. We want to know if the inverse is also a function. So the way that we can do that is you can just see if it passes the horizontal line test. Of if you drew horizontal lines through that, it can only pass through the graph one time. So this function, would it have an inverse as a function? No. no, because if we drew a horizontal line through that, it would cross three times. So this one, we would say the inverse is not a function. What about the algorithm of 
cubic graph here. If we did the horizontal line test for it, would it pass the horizontal line test? Yeah, because everywhere we drew it, it would only cross one time. So this one, if invert would be a function, so it is a function. And what about our good friend, the quadratic function? If I drew a horizontal line through there, right? Horizontal line test inverse is not a function. So there are a few questions on your homework today that are just pictures of graphs that you get to say is the inverse a function or not a function. And remember, we're talking about the horizontal line test because if the domain and range switch for the inverse, we need to make sure the y's don't repeat themselves. Mm. All right, horizontal line test. Um, you learned about this word last year too, very early on. You might have forgotten already. But a one-to-one -one function one to one is a function that passes both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So think about that means that none of the x's ever repeat themselves. That's what makes it pass the vertical line test as a function. And none of the y's repeat themselves. Um, that's what makes it pass the horizontal line test. One to one. All right, so the notation for inverse functions is that little negative one, right? It doesn't mean the negative one power. That's the notation for inverse. So if you need to write that up here, like, this is where my I know, I, I yelled in the microphone, Ew, gross! I realized that after I did that. <laughs> we read this as F inverse. That's what I was trying to get out there, but it was much harder to write than two different. So when you see that, you don't say F negative 1, you say F inverse. And the big thing about inverse functions is if you do their composition, so if you take f of f inverse, you always just get x back. Or if you switch it around and you do f inverse of f, right, you do the f of g kind of thing. If you do that, you get x back, which is the identity function. And so on your homework today, it's going to say, show algebraically that these two functions are inverses. And this is what I mean by that. Like, show that when you take one function and you put in the other function, that you get just x back. Oh, let's do one of those. show algebraically, I want to show that when I do f of g of x, I should just get x back. If you get anything but x back, you can stop and you can say they're not inverses. But you have to do it for both of them if it works for the first one. So this is why it's important to know how to do composition, because you can show that functions are inverses. Or prove. I know we don't like that word prove, but we get to do proofs in here. Cool proofs. Proof by induction. It's exciting. It's a whole different kind of proof. It's not too common proof. It's proof by induction. It does involve some writing. It's very step by step. It's so exciting. It's good for your brain, kids. It's good for your brain. So, f of g of x. I'm going to take this function and plug it in here. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 1 third x minus 2. And many people try to just look at it and say, oh yeah, that's going to work. And yeah, that's a plus 2, but I'm struggling with my smart board today. 
That's a minus two. I mean, right? Oh my gosh, you're right, sorry. Now it's that now it's gonna be be worse. This would be plus two and then minus two. Oh look, it's better. The three and the one third give you x, which is good, but you have to make sure everything else cancels out. So three times one third x is x, but then I get plus six minus two. Does that equal just x? So since it does not equal x, we don't even have to check the other one, because if this one didn't work, if the other one's not going to work either, or it doesn't even matter if it does. So we can say these are not inverses. On your test, when I ask you to do this, you've got to show algebraically. If you don't show algebraically, you're not going to get your points for saying yes or no. So you've got to know to check the f of g. I think maybe I have another one ready. We'll see. It's a surprise. Oh, I do. You check this one. Take B, plug in for S, see if you get X back, and then check the other one. Check both. It has to work both ways. Oh. And if I graph um, 2x plus 4, that means I'm going to start where? F4 on the y-axis. Oh, man, this is going to be terrible to graph because I am just smart more than being stupid. I've tried already today, and it's still not working. Okay, this way my graph is just going to be off. My slope is 2, so I can go up 2 over 1. <laughs> I'll just keep making my dot until I get to where I want it to be. Up 2 over 1. Just make a really bad dot. You can also go down 2, back 1. 
Now you don't really need to make all these dots, but and that would be look. I just put to right, and nothing's there. That's okay. I already tell him doing the game. Not. If I draft this using slope intercept form, it has a y intercept of negative two and a slope of one half. So that's rise over run, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. I just can't stop graphing sometimes. And that would be g of x, which happens to be inverse this. Notice that every single point on f of x, if you switch the x to y, that is the point on g of x. So like this point right here is the point 0, 4. Look at this point right here, it's the point 4, 0. Right? It's not a coincidence, every single point switches. That's the definition of inverse. So when you graph an inverse, um, if you just graph the first function, especially if it's not linear, like let's say it's some weird graph, and you make an xy chart, you don't even have to make an xy chart for the inverse because you can just switch the points around and you can get the same graph. Something else to notice is that these graphs are symmetric about this line right here. The line y equals x, if you take this and flipped it over that line, right, they're symmetric. And so uh, inverses are always symmetric about the line y equals x. Uh, you're definitely going to be graphing a few of these on your homework. I can tell you on chapter one test. There are a few problems that I make you find the inverse and uh, graph it. Okay. I think today you're just graphing like linear lines, maybe a parabola. Nothing too much. An inverse? You have to think about plugging it in, right? So like, if you look at it, you're really doing that SP in your head, right? That's what I say. Because you don't want to just say, Oh, well, these are reciprocal, so that's going to work. You have to make sure that it does work out, because those do work out. So let's talk about how we write the inverses. I think this is our last one for today. So I only wrote this in one step, and now for two, we like give you lots of steps. Like replace f of x with y, switch it from y, solve for y, replace y with x. Inverse of x, but I'm going to shorten it up for you. To find an inverse, the definition is you switch the x to y. So if I want you to write an inverse, you have to switch x to y, and then get y back by itself. So we'll start with a nice linear one, and then we'll do the lots of nice ones. No, we're doing other stuff too. Parabola and stuff like that. Because we're advanced, we can do that kind of stuff. So remember that f of x is the same as y. So if you want, you could rewrite this as y equals 5x minus 7, right? But hopefully you know that f of x is y. Because we're just going to switch those two. Definition of inverse. Switch the x to the y. So x equals 5y minus 7. That's not my inverse, because I need to get y back by itself. So all you have to remember is switch x and y, now get y by itself. So what am I going to do? Add 7. So I'm going to divide by 5, 5 out of y. And I'm totally okay if you just left this as x plus 7 over 5. But I really can't help myself. I have to break it up like I was going to graph it. And I'm going to write that as 1 fifth x plus 7 fifths. But that's the same as x plus 7 over 5. Do you agree with me on that? Algebraically, so I'm okay. Like if you if you want to prove that two functions are inverses, if you just found the inverse of one and show me that it's actually
the other equation right there because that's going to fill the other pill. Okay. Not my favorite thing, but I'm not like. I'm just using practice with MSG, but that's okay. I think mostly last year you dealt with inversions of linear functions, but we're super smart and we can do other things too. Um, so on this one, if I switch X and Y, do you agree I would get X equals 1 minus Y cubed? And again, you still just want to get y by itself, so you need to undo everything that's around it, and then you're going to have to get rid of that little uh, third power there. But I'm going to subtract 1. There's still a negative sign in front of that, so I'm going to divide by a negative. And that would be negative x plus 1. Um, I really like to make it look like this because I like my negative to be in the back. But negative x plus 1 is the same as this. And then what am I going to do to get rid of that little 3 there? Yeah, just like when we get rid of a square, we square root both sides. To get rid of a cube, we're going to cube root both sides. And I'm going to get, oh, you know what I should have done the last one? We're going to go back to this. I get y equals the cube root of 1 minus x. And it should make sense that the inverse of a cubic is going to be a cube root. The inverse of something squared is going to be a square root. And so that should make sense that that would be the answer. We really could do one more step, and we really should do one more step. Since this is f of x, we really should say the inverse is f inverse equals this. And I didn't do that on the last one. Might I like that better? It looks more official. Or negative x plus 1 is the same thing if you have that under control. So I'm going to go back and change this one here and say that that's f inverse of 1 fifth x plus 7 fifths. Switch x and y, solve back to 1. Questions about that? Yeah. I told you it was And then this 